Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has had a wonderful day. Super happy to be back with another commentary, this time at Tobacco Road Golf Club. This is probably one of my favorite golf courses I've ever played. I used to play this all the time when in high school for spring break, and I played it quite a bit throughout the years. Um, but uh, it's definitely a crazy video and probably one of the best starts I've ever had in my life. So if you guys enjoy this video, please be sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. Things have been very busy the last couple weeks and months, but I'm doing my best to continue putting out stuff that is worth your guys' time. So with that being said, let's hop into it. So I have actually put a video up of Tobacco Road before, a couple years ago, but I figured it was definitely worth doing an update. So I hope you guys enjoy this. And I hit an absolute dart with a 9-iron, and um, definitely one of my better shots of the day. I've been putting in a ton of work on my golf game, and it's been a really cool year because I feel like I finally reached a place where I can really be in a great place with my speed for long drive. And for reference, I actually went 240 ball speed in a speed session the day before this seven different times, including my last four balls of the session. So um, I didn't quite push my record any higher i topped out 240.8 and my record is currently 241 241.6 however at the time of this recording the day after tomorrow i will be making a push for it so who knows by the time this video goes out there might be a new record but my point in saying that is you might see a couple pretty tight swings like that one you guys just saw there um that's definitely a result of a lot of lactic acid having been built up from you know swinging as much as i was the day before but it's really cool because i feel like i'm still able to play good just despite having had that speed session so that's really exciting and by the way let me know if you guys like this um transition i thought it might be cool on shots that are maybe inside 150 yards since you know i'm filming in 4k i can zoom in and you guys can see the ball actually land um and so if you guys enjoyed that kind of transition let me know um if not let me know as well and um, i'll adjust accordingly but uh, just thought that might be something cool to mix in there. You guys can let me know what you think. But uh, a little bit long, but got about 10 feet, and this ball just jumped straight left off the face. I think it might have been sitting in a bit of a depression that I wasn't aware of. The one thing I've been noticing about my game over the last uh, couple months as I've continued to be able to work at it, my ball striking has been the best it's ever been in my life. I would even wager to say... It's better than when I was in college, but my green reading just isn't where it needs to be. So aim point is probably going to be very important for me to work on, as well as getting a caddy at some point as I play more competitive events throughout the year. My plan this year is to play more competitive events and intermix it with my long drive competitions um, and just kind of balance that out as best as I can. And uh, it's actually pretty good to film the YouTube stuff too because it kind of keeps me... It, what it, what this does, I will send many of these swings to my coach, um, Bernie Nager out of Kays Valley. Shout out to Bernie. Um, and it's really cool because we can we have a ton of video and we can really analyze these swings. So it's great to film for content, but also has a multi-purpose um, where I can send him, you know, my swings and we can look at a couple of things that I was doing good or bad on each given swing. So that's definitely very helpful. So one of the things I had to adjust to pretty quickly, and you guys will see throughout the video, I do struggle to adjust to it, is these greens are a little slow. It's still coming out of the winter season, so it's definitely understandable. Um, but I was pretty impressed with the condition this course is in overall. And um, you guys definitely want to check it out. It's in Sanford, North Carolina. If you're ever in the Sand Hills region near Pinehurst, go to the play here. I mean, it's really just a very unique golf course, and you're not going to find anything like it anywhere else. So on hole four, 200 for the day, off to a great start, another par five. Probably one of my best drives of the day right here, just absolutely pummeled this. This ball didn't move more than two yards right to left. And when it's, uh, you know, I could probably have carried that bunker a little more. But I'll be honest with you guys, my speed was probably a little down today just because, as I told you, I had that speed session the day before, and I was toasted when I woke up this morning. Well, I guess the morning I played this this course. So, you know, probably could have gotten a little more out of it if I was a little more fresh, but this definitely works pretty good. So just trying to play a slinging draw in here. 
And I don't know why, but you guys will see it land just a little bit right of the pin on the back of the green. I don't know why it flew so far. I thought it was going to... Um, I thought it was going to be right on the money, but for whatever reason, the ball kind of flattened out as it descended. I could tell right away when it was in its apex, it was going to be a bit long, but I like seeing the direction being good. I can work on and I can live with missing my number, you know, like in terms of how far I'm hitting it. If my direction's on, I know that my swing is good. So that's kind of what I took away from that. And for this putt again, common theme, just leaving it a little short. Actually, this was actually a pretty good pace, so I take that back, but you will notice that from time to time throughout this round. So I got about a three-footer. I know this snaps to the left pretty good, I guess, what I, so, but it went dead straight, and I got away with it, so snuck that one in the corner. So on to the next hole, drivable par four, pins up there in the left, and obviously you can certainly lay up, but uh, you guys didn't come here to see me lay up, so we're going to send this one. So I'm going to try to favor the right side of the green here so there's more room for me to miss. Uh, I kind of came over the top and pulled this one, but I got away with it because I didn't have much uh, side spin on it. So this will catch the left co left corner of the green. Just gets on top of the shelf. You guys will see how close this was to sliding all the way back. So you can see the tee there. And see that false front. So my ball is right on the edge there. If that was maybe another two yards short, it's going to roll all the way back down. I would have definitely had a fun chip. So I was kind of watching it because I knew from the tee, because I could still see the ball, it hadn't made it all the way back to the edge of that, to the back of that green where the pen was. So it was definitely uh, sitting on that uh, edge a little bit. Had the greens been cut tighter like they are in the summer, that might have rolled back. So I will take that for sure. So again, just trying to get a little bit of pace on this putt. A little bit short and right, but not horrible. And this is the putt that snaps to the right pretty good. So I'm just trying to commit to the line. One of the things I've noticed, I have a lot more trouble with putts that break away from me. And I think it's just kind of perception and visual cues. So one of the things I've been doing with Bernie is I'm working with a lot of lasers. And what I mean by that is like I'm having lasers kind of lining up the putt. So if you can imagine your putt putter head... I'm having a laser, the, the toe and the heel pointing straight at a straight putt at the hole so that they form kind of a two lines like straight at the hole so I can kind of orient my eyes a little bit. So I'm trying to get my eyes used to seeing what's actually there instead of what I'm perceiving. So it's a process, but I'm getting better every day at it. You can see this one just to the right of my shirt lands about pin high. And I'm trying to finish a little more left here in my rehearsal. I got a little around, little round there. My tendency on these flighted shots, which, by the way, has probably been my most significant weapon I've added to my game. And by the way, that was it. I hit an extra shot just because I wanted to try to tighten that up a little bit. So that's what that, that was that ball you just saw there. But uh, I have a tendency to get a little round with my flighted shots because I can kind of throw the club inside and try and, and get a little scoopy. You can see my ball was right in the pitch mark, so... Um, definitely didn't move too much, but I can get a little scoopy because in long drive, I have a tendency to try to play a, a, a draw. And so I can fall into that habit a little bit. So as long as I take the club back a little higher and just finish left, I'm typically good. I only get in trouble when I get a little stuck in round with the, uh, flight of shots, but it's definitely been a good thing for me to have to take off spin and have more predictable flights. Getting a little frustrated there because just left it a bit short. But uh, and a lot of people think, well, it doesn't look too windy here. Why would you bother hitting a flooded shot? Well, you know, specifically, you know, going back to the shot from the hole before, it's 140 yards. You figure, I probably need to, if I want to hit a full shot, I'm looking at a 54-degree wedge. A full swing of the 54-degree wedge from 140 yards is going to be spinning 12,000 RPMs. You can't control that. You can control a pitching wedge spinning 7,500 and so it just provides a lot more predictable landing angle, and it allows you to play the game, honestly, just to play the game. You can't play the golf, game of golf with 10,000 RPMs to spin. So wind and all that, it's definitely awesome, but it's even great when there's not a lot of wind because I can still control the flight. So beautiful shot here, and you guys are about to see some reality. I've been playing amazing, so sit back and enjoy this. <laughs> I was just, that was a... 
hook lie also uphill and I just was so uncomfortable with that shot because it was a tight lie and I knew the way it's set up it's just a weak spot for me hitting into a hook lie uphill because it just makes me want to dig right into the fairway so it's just you know where my game is and that's one of the reasons I'm not in the tour but I can also see myself fixing these things they're very fixable and I hit a couple extra shots um, you see one extra ball there. I wanted to throw another one down after I hit that shot just to um, hit it again. But uh, my second shot is the one closer, so the one that's furthest away was my first one after I already had bladed one long. So it's good to see that I was pretty tight there, and the distance dispersion is pretty good. It's just a matter of getting my low point on absolute lock so that this stuff never happens. But it happens to the best of the guy, best players sometimes too. So you just got to shake it off and move on to the next shot. But at the same time, I am quite excited with the direction my game is headed because those shots are not happening nearly as often as they used to. And when they do, I actually find that I'm bouncing back from them a lot quicker. And I think that's just been because I've just been extremely consistent throughout this offseason about really focusing on my golf game. And I'm able to put in probably 20 hours a week on average which, if you think about it, is not that bad. And you can make progress in 20 hours of dedicated, consistent work on your game with a structured plan and a good coach. No doubt about it, especially if you stay consistent. So that's definitely been good. And I have a great base to build off of. So just about, you know, sticking with the program. And I'm just excited to see where things go with it. You know, I I don't want to make any promises, but as I compete more and more, if my scores is warranted, I'm definitely going to look into bigger events and you know i think it'd be a really cool cool uh, story so another pretty solid shot here right on top of that uh, spine so was able to stay on that shelf this is probably the hardest hole in the front in my opinion um you know you got a lot to contend with the, with that elevation change and a lot of different uh tiers on the screen so very happy to just barely get it on the right tier so i can kind of be a little aggressive here and you know go go head hunting for a birdie but ball just kind of slides off on me a little bit. Again, just a little bit of a misread. I truly think the lowest hanging fruit for me at this moment is dialing in aim point a little more. Um, Bernie has definitely been on me to tighten that up a little more. And to be honest, I've just been slightly lazy. I have no excuse for why I haven't been working on it more. But I definitely need to do that. So quite a beautiful view standing on the top of the ninth tee. This is one of the highest points of the course what I could tell. So um, nice to get a little view of it. And so uh, I'm going to hit this shot, pull it a little bit, but it does open up over there. over there, And I will carry it over that bunker and the, that grass, so that definitely helps out. Um, I wasn't sure how much room was there, so I was definitely a little concerned. But uh, as I drove up, I saw it definitely opened up quite nicely, and I do catch the left edge of the fairway. Quite a significant pothole as well left by the, uh, the tee shot. So, because the pin is on the back right corner, I will not have tree trouble, but this is quite a funky green. Um, no more than 15, 20 feet wide and probably about 100 feet long, so definitely an interesting little hole. And I get stuck horrendously here again. I, de I barely get away with it. I do catch it a bit heavy, but you see it land right in front of the flag and kick left. So a bit short, but it funneled down nicely. So I got away with it. As you can see, really narrow green. But uh, we're still in position to try to give birdie a go and finish off this nine strong. So got about probably 40, 50 feet here. Actually quite a straightforward putt. This is a very easy green. It's just very long. So this isn't that hard of a hole when you think about it. But uh, yeah, I have about three feet left here to wrap up my round. And uh, right in the middle for a two under 33. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe, like the video. Let me know where you guys would want me to play in the future. And I will see you guys next time.